Hey, how's it going? It's Sam Frost here from ReviewsBoss.com. Now in this video, I am bringing you a quick review of SERP Robot. So SERP Robot used to be known as SERPLab.co.uk. Uh, that's what I sort of always knew it as from when I first started using the product, but they rebranded last year to SERP Robot, which is, I guess, a more generic and uh, you know international name, getting rid of that .co.uk domain. Now, SERP Robot uh, is probably one of the more popular SERP tracking products or, or search engine ranking position tracking products. If you've watched uh, you know, affiliate marketing tutorials on YouTube or, or uh, SEO tutorials, you'll often see people using this product. Uh, when I actually dive into the interface, you'll probably recognize it actually, to be honest. Um, it's got quite a familiar interface if you've basically been working in the online marketing space for any length of time. now. The reason I want to review this product is because it's changed its pricing. So in the past, SERP Robot used to be free with a premium add-on. So the way it would work is you could register a free account and you could basically have unlimited tracking uh, for free for a, a small project or a couple of small sites. You know, so if you had like one or two affiliate websites or a business website because you own a physical business or maybe just a couple of clients, you could use SERP Robot for free. Uh, unfortunately, it's changed now. So what it's changed to is you get 14 days for free and then you have to pay. Uh, so what I want to do in this review is basically determine whether or not SERP Robot is worth paying for. Uh, bear in mind that you, whatever you're doing with regards to SEO and tracking search rankings, you really do need to have a proper search ranking tracking tool. It's not good enough to just spot check your own results. Uh, you know, jumping on Google or on your phone and just searching for your keywords and checking where you rank. I know a lot of business owners tend to do that. Um, it's just not good practice. I know people doing affiliate marketing do it. Sometimes there's some value in it if you think there's something weird going on with your search results, but as a rule, you need to have a dedicated independent tool to check how you're ranking. Uh, so SERP Robot is the one I use the most. Uh, and so what I want to do in this review is just cover some of the features, some of the benefits, some of the things I don't like about it, look at whether the pricing represents good value for money, and then give you a recommendation on whether or not you should use it. So right off the bat, the first thing you'll notice is this piece here called Free SERP Check. Now if we load up the Free SERP Check, basically what this is is a spot checking tool. Uh, so we could put in a, a domain here. I'm gonna put in my reviewsboss.com domain and we're gonna check where I rank for ClickBank review and confirm I'm not a robot and hopefully I don't get hit with the capture and then we check SERPs. And then what it's gonna do is actually go and spot check that. So this is like the more legit equivalent of basically sitting behind your computer and just choosing to search. And with any luck, we'll see a, um, yeah, well, here we go, we can see a ranking. So. My website, reviewplus.com, is position 12 uh, in US Google search rank for is, uh, ClickBank review, and it's showing here the keyword, it's showing the position, and it's showing the URL that's showing up. Now, interestingly enough, uh, one of the advantages of tracking your SERP results is the fact that I have a page on my site that's actually called ClickBank review, so reviewsboss.com forward slash ClickBank review, and that had historically been ranking really well for this keyword, and now that seems to have moved off and uh, you know been replaced with this particular smaller article here that's not so detailed uh, called Is ClickBank a Scam Now? I'm basically analyzing what's going on there. You know, Maybe Google's not indexing my page for some reason, maybe I've been penalized, whatever, but having the automatic SERP tracking set up through SERP Robot, I was basically able to see this has become an issue. Uh, and once you've done your spot checking for free, they push you towards testing the SERPs or tracking them automatically with the tool. Now this is the bit that used to be free for the limited plan, but as you can see, you now try it totally free of charge for 14 days. Uh, so all you have to do is register and, and go through the process. And once you've registered, you'll basically see something like this. Now this is my account here that you can see there's a whole lot of projects. I've blurred them out uh, because some of them I don't want to disclose what they are. Uh, you know, so. Basically, all the private information I've got is going to be blurred, and I hope you don't mind too much. Uh, but basically, if you were setting up your SERP robot account for the first time, you would hit something like this. You just wouldn't see any, uh, where there's the blurred content, you wouldn't see anything. And what you would do is you would add a new project. Uh, so what we're going to do is add a new project here, and I'm going to add a project for my samfrost.co.nz uh, website. That's for my digital marketing consulting business. So we're going to call that Samfrost. 
DMC, Digital Marketing Consultant. The domain name is samfrost.co.nz. Now they tell you here, uh, when you add in your domain name, you don't need to use the, the HTTP or the www. You just add in the, the domain name as you registered it, basically. Uh, you can also use specific URLs. So if you want to check something like a YouTube video or a particular page of a site, if you were to just check a YouTube video using the domain level checking, it would check other videos on YouTube, but if you wanted to check a specific YouTube video that you've uploaded, then that's the option you would use. And then what you're able to do is add in your keywords. So uh, Sam Frost Digital Marketing, I could add as a keyword, uh, samfrost.co.nz, just to see where I rank for my own URL, uh, Sam Frost SEO. Now you can also add keywords in bulk, so you can come in and you can add with comma separation or as a list, a whole load of keywords as well. So if you're copying out of another tool, this is a really effective way to do it. And we're gonna go back to single mode. Now you can pick a region. So in this case, I want to pick the New Zealand region because this site, uh, samfrost.co.nz, as the name implies, is only relevant to New Zealand. Uh, if you're doing an international campaign or website, you wanna go for the standard option, which is global slash US. There are also advanced, advanced options as well. You can search for normal Google results, Google local, uh, so the local pack, Bing, Yahoo and YouTube. You can make the searching or the tracking come as if it's from desktop, phone or tablet. Uh, and you can actually specify a more specific search location. So I could specify here Christchurch, New Zealand, um, basically because if we do this, it should then show you yep, Christchurch, New Zealand. Cool, it recognizes that as a place. That's where I live, that's where I'm based. So it's verified that location exists. Most of my business comes from there. So we're gonna actually target in, not just on New Zealand, but Christchurch specifically. You can select result languages. So you might say, I only want to check English results. And you can say, I only want to check results from a specific country. I I'm gonna leave that as default though. And what we do now is we add the project. And once the project is added, it will appear at the bottom of the project list. And then what we're able to do is actually go in and check that project. And what we can see here is that at the moment, the search check tracking is in progress. So it's all in progress. It's got my keywords here. Uh, once that's updated, we should actually be able to go in and see results. So you can set things like your search frequency or check frequency. So I could change my check frequency to be, uh, what could I change it to? I could change it to every two hours, every two days, every every year. Um, 24 hours, the default option is what I usually leave it at, but you might have a reason to change this. If you've got a big site that moves quickly, you might want to use something more frequent, like a news style site. But if you've got a site that's you know very new uh, or, or you don't have any specific reason to change it, I would just change to every, or leave it at 24 hours. You can add competitors that you want to check against, and you can also set up automatic email reporting as well, which is quite handy. Uh, so if you're working with clients and you want to make sure they know what's happening, you can set up reporting. One thing to bear in mind, of course, is that if one of their keywords drops and that gets caught on the report, you know you don't have a chance to basically stop that from happening. Uh, if you use a reporting tool like swido.com, which I will do another review on that, uh, swido allows you to say, hey, if any of these KPIs fall below a certain point, uh, I don't want the report to go out, send me a notification instead so I can check what's happened because it can be embarrassing to send an automated report that makes it look like something really bad has happened. So just bear that in mind. Uh, you can force refresh your keywords as well. Uh, you can refresh search volume, so it brings in search volume data so you can see, okay, I'm ranking position seven for a keyword that's got a monthly search volume of 7,200 or whatever. You can export your data as a CSV and you can review reporting over any time period. And you can always add more keywords as well just by hitting the add keywords button and uh, we could add some more keywords in Sam Frost Marketing, Sam Frost Digital Marketing Consultant, Marketing Consultant, Christchurch, uh, Digital Marketing Consultant, NZ, we're just gonna add some more keywords just to show you how that feature works. And now we can see that these keywords here have actually refreshed. So these ones, uh, Samfrost Digital Marketing, Samfrost.co.nz, Samfrost SEO, they've all refreshed. We can now see that my latest position is one, my best position is one, and my first position is one as well. You can see when it was last updated and it will show you the URL that was found. Uh, now what's quite cool is you can actually go in and inspect 
specific results. So here we can see, if we click on this one, we can look at for the keyword Samfrost Digital Marketing. My website is number one, my Facebook page is number two, and then it's actually some other uh, pieces or other websites that I'm listed on. The networkers is a, uh, like a networking group I'm a member of. My LinkedIn profile's here, businessnetworking.nz, that's a directory, Bolster, that's a, uh, a sort of collaborative project I'm involved in, and so on and so forth. So it's pretty clever how this works. Uh, and you can also check your results over time using the graph as well. Uh, or you can analyze further, you can open the result by clicking. And here you can see what it actually looks like in real life. Now this is obviously looking at my search, yours might be a little bit different if you're from overseas. Uh, and yeah, it, it's all pretty clever. You can actually add notes as well. So you can add tags, so you can say, hey, I'm you know tagging this as being you know a crucial keyword or whatever. Uh, and then you can also delete keywords as well. So basically, it's a pretty clever tool. You can track by looking at the full keyword details, your performance over time. You're obviously not gonna see much here. Uh, you can also see a sort of audit log or check history. Now, if we go and look at a project that's got a bit more meat to it, so I'll open up the Reviews Boss project itself because this has been here for a while. You're actually gonna see a bit more detail here. So what we can see is since our last check, we can see the average position of Reviews Boss across the keywords I'm tracking has worsened from 21.06 to 23.40. Eight out of my 52 keywords have improved though. I've got 19 out of my 52 keywords in the top three, 32 out of 52 in the top 10, 44 out of 52 in the top 30, and 49 out of 52 in the top 100. And now I can see my full list of keywords and you can see here versus that fresh project I set up, there's a lot more data. So we can order by any of these. So I can order by change. So this particular piece here, ClickBank Review, that was a new keyword that I added uh, just yesterday actually. So you can see here that it's it's not actually picking up a, a change because of the fact that it's new. Uh, but if we were to look at these ones here, like Proposify Review, the best change I've had is minus three positions or three closer to number one for this keyword. Uh, we can also order it the other way as well and see what's worsened. So we could see that, okay, sale here review, uh, I've added 11 positions. So I've, I've gone backwards 11 positions, strikingly review, I've disappeared off the results. Uh, you can do the same for your latest rankings. Usually this is what I use, the latest one filtered from top to bottom. So you can basically go through and see how you rank. Uh, you can do the same for best. What First is what you were first identified as being as when you added that keyword. Volume is the search volume, US and then global. You can hover over it, uh, this as well and you can see what it's telling you. When was it last updated and what URL was found? And once again, with this, you've got a little bit more opportunity to actually break down and see those keyword details. So how did you perform over time? So if we add this keyword here and we look you know, on a monthly time scale, we can see basically I've sat at number one for quite some time, uh, but on Sunday, the March, March the 17th, it actually dropped back to uh, position two and then came back up to position one. And we can go back further in time as well. I should be able to go all the way back to about 2018, I think. And here you can see the breakdown of that, which is quite cool. So yeah, basically very clever tool in terms of what it presents. The interface is quite good as well. Uh, you know, I do find it pretty easy. If I wanted to force refresh this keyword, I could do that here as well. And then finally, you can see a sort of aggregated performance uh, of how your website is doing over time. So you can see here, you know, this is from April 2018 to April 2019. You can see how my uh, average position has been tracking. Uh, so really quite a useful tool. Uh, you know, there's lots going on. There's lots to, to work with. Anything here you can basically uh, refresh manually manually you're not locked into the keywords you select you've basically got lots of options to work with so there is quite a lot of power in this tool uh, you can add notes you can do all sorts of stuff uh, yeah there's heaps and heaps going on basically uh, so you could also copy your new word your keywords to a new project if for some reason you wanted to say do a version of that project that looked at the mobile specific rankings or if you wanted to do a version of your project that looked at a different geolocation but you, so you, you're tracking New Zealand and then you want to do your website for Australia, but you want to keep the keywords the same. You don't need to manually enter them again. You can just copy them to a new project and, and set that new project up. So th the functionality of the tool is very straightforward. I don't think you'll struggle with how this tool works. Uh, what I want to now do is look at the pricing. 
So if we come back and have a look at the pricing for Cert Robot, basically how it works is that you get 14 days for free with a single robot. Uh, so a robot, it's hard to say exactly how much you get with a robot. So a SERP robot works on this basis of robots uh, or SERP bots and one SERP bot gives you X amount of functionality and then you have to add more. So I pay for two, I believe. Um, you can see here that one SERP robot gets you 300 searches a day. Uh, so basically, uh, if you're needing to do more than 300 searches a day on SERP robot, uh, you'd have to buy two. So you, you, your cheapest plan is $4.99 a month at the moment. Then you could have two SERP robots for $9.98 US a month. That gives you up to 600 searches a day. I, I've got all those projects in there and I only pay this amount, 600 searches a day and it works fine. I'll probably soon go up to the three bots for 900 searches a day. Still very reasonably priced. You can pay yearly as well and lock in a bit more of a discount. Uh, I believe it's discounted at least. Maybe it's not at the moment. Um, certainly in the past it had been that the yearly pricing was a bit sharper. Uh, but if we actually compare now, it really doesn't look that much different, so I'd probably just pay monthly, to be honest. Uh, and you can basically see here that each additional SERP bot gives you extra 300 daily keyword checks and only costs $4.99 a month. Now, where some confusion has come is in the original uh, SERPlab.co.uk version of this, and up until recently, they, were, they didn't do a very good job at explaining what you got when you paid for a SERP robot. It was kind of like, hey, we'll give you one for free, and then if you need feel like you need more maybe things are running slowly or you're running out of capability uh, we'll you know encourage you to buy another one and if you come back to your dashboard you can actually see how much of your SERP robot uh, functionality is using so you can see here that I have two SERP bots I can check 325 checks per 24 hours I've got 214 keywords um, and it's giving me an estimated workload so basically of my two SERP bots this first one here He's used up fully. Um, this next one is basically uh, using about 63% of his workload. So I've got quite a bit left to run. Now this one I have here is free because basically I think I'm grandfathered in on an old plan where you don't have to pay for your first bot. If you're signing up fresh, you do need to pay uh, right from the get-go. They've actually got an explanation here. Um, we couldn't afford to keep CertBot 100% free, so we've switched to a 14-day free trial. Uh, and then crazy cheap pricing for all of our paid users. So it, basically to conclude, uh, is Cert Robot worth buying? Is it worth paying for? Uh, I think it is. I, I think if you want a professional SERP checking tool, uh, I really like it. I, I think it's very functional. Uh, it seems to be quite accurate in its tracking. It's easy to work with. And it is well priced. I mean, for the average user, you know, you're probably going to be able to pay five US dollars a month and get all the tracking you need uh, with good accuracy. You know, even if you're doing, you know, lots of client work, you don't need to spend too much uh, compared to some tools. Now, if you're using something else like SEMrush or or whatever that's already got SERP tracking built into it, you probably don't need to use it. Another example is the Mangles tool suite, which I will review on this channel. Once again, you don't need to. Uh, if you've already got something like that, you don't need to pay again for SERP Robot. But if you're sitting there thinking, I don't have any form of SERP tracking software uh, in my toolkit, and I want to do it effectively, but without spending too much money, SERP Robot is a great place to begin. Uh, one other feature as well to mention is if you're working with clients, you can actually give them view key access. So they don't need a login or anything. And you don't have to keep sending them reports. You can give them a view key for your project that you then send them to SERP Robot and they log in with that view key and then they are able to actually see the project you've set up for them and check it at any stage and that can be really helpful as well. So just bear in mind that last feature. But yeah, in conclusion for the SERP Robot review, if you need something to track your search results on Google, I highly recommend it. I think it's a good tool. I think it's reasonably priced. The interface is a bit dated. Uh, sometimes, you know, it, it can bug out a little bit. Uh, you, there have been a few times in the past where you go in and there's just a message saying our SERP robots are, are broken or overwhelmed, you know, and there's a big time lag with checking. Sometimes, I, I don't think any tool is 100% accurate, so sometimes it won't track things accurately. But on the balance of probabilities and all things being considered, I do like SERP robot. 
So yeah, if you found this video useful, please leave a like. If you've got a comment or a question, drop a comment below and subscribe to my channel for more honest and detailed reviews of digital marketing products and services, as well as reviews and tutorials on how you can grow your business online. Thank you so much for watching.